Hi everyone, I'm Mike Gordon. I would love to welcome you to the premiere of my perfect game Let's Play of Final Fantasy VI Advance. While I've been around on YouTube ever since it first came out, this will be my first ever video recording on the website. And you have no idea how nervous I am about this endeavor. Final Fantasy VI is probably in the top 5, if not top 3 for me in terms of playing through the game casually. And it is many people's personal favorite game. But in terms of playing towards perfection, it is one of the worst games in the series. Frankly, I'd rather try playing through 9 with its speedrun mechanics, or 4 with its notoriously bad drop rate some play through Final Fantasy VI. But who knows? I might do a completionist let's play of those other two games someday. But for now, I primarily desire an opportunity to achieve a perfect game on one of the few games in a series that does not have any sort of guide to achieve. The reason I am playing through the Game Boy Advance port of Final Fantasy VI rather than the SNES, PlayStation, or mobile ports, the game is simple. The Game Boy version is the only version where absolute perfection is even remotely close to possible. So let's start a new game here. The Ancient War of the Magi. When its flames at last receded, only the charred husk of a world remained. Even the power of magic was lost. In the thousand years that followed, iron, gunpowder, and steam engines took the place of magic, and life slowly returned to the barren land. Yet there now stands one who would reawaken the magic of ages past, and use its dread power as a means by which to conquer all the world. Could anyone truly be foolish enough to repeat that mistake? Man oh man. Is that quite eerie. Almost like the book I'm writing. What's this? There's the city. I believe an Esper's been found frozen there a thousand years after the War of the Magi. Ah! Probably just another wild goose chase. I don't know. They wouldn't have let us use her unless they were confident th that the information was good. Ah yes, our witch. I hear she fried 50 of our Magitek armored soldiers in 3 minutes. Kinda makes her skin crawl, don't it? Relax, that thing on her head, she's a mindless puppet. What kind of... the girl won't even breathe unless we tell her to. What's up with the flip-flopping of personalities between Biggs and Wedge? We'll approach from the east. Move out! And so our adventure begins. While these credits are rolling, let's go over the conditions for a perfect game. As usual, every character, Esper, and Cyclist must be completed. 100% base area, every battle formation, with exceptions, level 99, all treasures, etc. And for the record, I'm also going to watch every character specific cutscene and dialogue. Additionally, I will be completing the following conditions. Every ability learned for each party member. That includes magic. 
all 270 items at maximum capacity, which isn't achievable in earlier versions of the game. I will max out everybody's stats, which is only achievable in the version of the game I'm playing, the Game Boy Advance version. And for most of this run, I will be doing a low-level game that's mostly natural magic. I will be making use of RNG manipulation where applicable, as well as glitches to achieve these ends. Techniques like Velt manipulation, save and escape buffering, and the GPA exclusive level reset glitch will be used, as well as techniques like slot manipulation and the confused smoke bomb technique. In total, I will be playing through this game completing exactly three level resets in the entire run. Now that we understand the conditions for perfection, it is time to begin Let's Play Final Fantasy VI after these messages. The girl takes point and oh I all right character specific cutscene here I was getting a little agitated here so put everything on weight foul speed six shortcut cursor precision remember R dash on obviously I'm gonna give Wedge a chance to lead the party because we won't while they while we still have them. Because why not? All items, stats, everything's in order. So let's begin. This formation right there is a single silver logo. It's not missable, so we're going to move on. And here's our first example of what I like to call escape buffering. While, all, while two, my other two party members are performing their attack, I'm going to hold on to Terra's menu. Wait for the second party member, and then run away. This technique is not perfect, but it has a high success rate. And boom! Terra doesn't gain any experience points for this battle. Alright, let's head on up. And I'm going to show that you know, speedrunners walk around that center space right there in order to demonstrate that Yes, this spell is missable, but even though we are forced into some encounters, and we can't run away from this fight, but it's a missable encounter, and this is the only place in the game that we can fight it. Fight two silver logos. And I realize I should use Bio Blaster here, but you know, no, but oh well. I'll use this opportunity to show off Confuser, and and a little later Banisher. See what they can do because we will never be using Confuser or Balance sure the rest of this run. Yeah, Terra, unlike Biggs and Wedge, have yeah. See, you can't run away from. Unlike Terra and Wet, unlike Biggs and Wedge or everyone else in the game for that matter, Terra's the only one with unique abilities to her. Abilities like Bio Blaster, Confuser. Banisher, which we just saw. Yeah, she gets 24 experience points. So long as Terra doesn't hit level 4 at this point in the game, I don't care if she gains a little bit of experience. Terra, you know, Terra is one of the few early game character for, you know, pre Narsh battle who can afford to gain experience points. In fact, I think she might be the only one who can afford experience. There is some more safe buffering. And I decided to show off Thunder and Ice Beams this battle, just cause. Yeah. And here's another in a s impossible to miss random encounter. Yeah. Here, I decide to use Bio Blaster on the side with the Silver Logo. So long as that's still, 
Because even if we took out the ba the first guard behind us, so long as that Silver Loba's on the field, we can't run away from battle. And then I thought about healing Arrow right away, but I was like, you know what? Let's wait till Wedge it until Biggs' turn comes up before we heal Terra. So I could save so I could not not save buffer. Escape buffer. And I'm doing this and now I'm gonna run away. This is definitely something risky because if I could have just waited until both characters used healing went you know use recovery, but I was like, you know what, I'm gonna chance it. So long as Terra doesn't hit level four, I don't care. Alright. And here's a no and this one is a very scary fight. Similar to the Silver Lobos, you can't run away so long as those Megala dots are on the field. But even then, you want to take out the Megalodots first, or else they could wipe you out. And I'm escape buffering. This one is pretty much the safest use of save buffering you can do. Just wait till the Megalodots are both dead, and then you proceed to escape. The reason why is because we're on wait because we're on wait time for the active time battle. So, so long as you're on wait, if you're in the character menu, you won't get hit, you won't get in, you won't be able to have any character's gauges fill up. However, a character can only run away when their gauges are maxed out, as in only when their turn comes up. Until then, all you can do is hold L and R in order to boost their escape meter. And there's another battle that went off without hitch. No, if Terra gets experience in this fight, she's pretty much going to hit level 5 at the end of the Narsh battle. Which isn't a bad thing in and of itself. Alright, something about this room I want to tell you. There's only two enemies encounters you can get in here. Three rare rats or a rare rat and bandit. I've actually done some extensive research on belt manipulation. You do not want rare rat or ban the rare rat bandit formation. You don't really need either of these formations at this stage in the game. Rare rat the three rare rats don't do anything for you other than give you enemies to kill and add to your bestiary. However, the three rare rats... The three rare rats, they don't also damper your... your they don't hurt your chances at actually getting into any encounters. And I'm going to edit out all my failed attempts here. I just edited out all my failed attempts here. Here's my successful run. And this is a glorious run. But if you get into an encounter with three rare rats, you might as well just continue on and see what happens. But if you get a rare rat bandit, you might as well just reset your game and try again. I was lucky, I didn't get into any encounters. Now, I could do something specific to try to manipulate the encounters in the next room, so that I don't get into any encounters before the next save point. The problem is, the three rare rats stand guard for two spritzers, for either the two spritzers or the two rare rat formations. Those are bad formations for us to get. The only decent formation we could get in the second and third rooms is Bandit Spritzer. Bandit Spritzer doesn't really interfere with odds, the odds of getting a decent rage. So we might as well just... But the other two do. The two Spritzers get in the way of that of getting the Heavy Armor Rage. Later on. And... The two Rare Rats, they're just a bad Rage in general. I have my notes. 
and it says here that Rare Rats are G6 F5. Rare Rat Bandit and the two Rare Rats actually impede in the MS in our Doberman range. If you do not get those enemy encounters at all, your chances of, get, of encountering a Doberman becomes 5 eighths, or 62.5% chance. But if you get two Rare Rats, those chances dwindle all the way to 12.5. Sorry, this battle is pretty self-explanatory. You just listen to what Biggs and Wedge have to say, and, and you don't use Thunder Beam on them. Because Ymir absorbs Thunder Beam. You know, don't attack him when he's in the shell or you'll use Vega Volt. You could hypothetically grind down, beat down this shell and kill it in Oregon Ether as a drop, or you could wheel both of them down and put the hopes of getting both. It's not worth it because, again, if you. It takes. The shell has 50,000 hit points. To spend that much time wheeling it away to get an ether and a high potion, only to, uh-oh, get into an encounter with either two spritzers or two rare rats, run stun, you gotta start over. And no, you can't, like, RNG reset the step counter for a random encounter here. So... If I only encountered a bandit in a, a bandit spritzer formation, I would continue on. I don't encounter that. In fact, you're going to see soon enough just how amazing my RNG has been. You know, I managed to get an extremely rare step counter that allows me to reach the next save point without getting into a single random encounter. Because of this, I don't have a need to encounter Bandit Spritzer at all. You know, this was, like, it took me eight tries because I kept encountering two Rare Rats, or a Bandit Rare Rat, or two Spritzers, which are all run-enders. You know, I would have moved off if I just encountered three rare rats, or and or a bandit spritzer formation, but neither of them had but I kept getting bad luck. And I kept running into either two spritzers, two rare rats, or a rare rat bandit on the way to either the boss or the next save point. Yes, this is an amnesia plot line. By the way, that's not how amnesia works in real life. A character with amnesia is just... It's a... Re it's a revertible damage. It's... It's a form of brain damage is what it is. Meaning, once you lose your mem your long-term memories, those memories are gone and they are not coming back. So yeah, Terra just remembered her memory all of a sudden with no triggers or anything. She needs to, you know, in real life, someone like Terra, she will need to find somebody with a connection to her past who can actually reveal details about who she is and is actually someone who actually cares about her and her well-being. Because that's something that so an, amnesi an amnesiac would actually have to do in order to pick up the pieces of their life and start over. Because, but you know, this is a fantasy story, so that means she's going to remember everything at some point, and it's contrived. I don't like Tara as a character. I like I like playing as her. She's one of the best- when you max everybody out, she is one of the absolute best characters in the game. But in the early portion, but as far as writing goes, you know, she's basically just a MacGuffin. And lucky here, I got the extremely rare encounter. I'm gonna save buffer, that means reset, and I'm going to take 
And this took me only about three tries to actually get a pat an ore for an RNG for the RNG manipulation. So I could actually get to the end without getting to a random encounter. Seriously, the it is almost impossible to reach that save point without getting to an encounter. I would usually get either a rare rat band I would usually get either three rare rats or a bandit spritzer. If in all my successful attempts, I got neither. And man, was that a blessing disguise. Anyways, Terra's on the run from Narsh guards because, well, we were killing them. Well, we were killing the, the guards in their patrols up to this point, so of course they would want to turn around. Like, who's this? This safe crown will be all mine. <laughs> wow, this is very eerie. So, yeah, I've been spending all this time just talking about the mechanics of this game because... Admittedly, it's probably one of the least contrived stories in all Final Fantasy. You know, but it gets a little contrived. Terra is just a MacGuffin. She's maybe the main character, the, or at least the closest thing to the main to a main character. But she's more of as a she's more or less just the driving force of the first half of the game. She doesn't really have those nuances or complexities that other main characters like Cecil or Cloud have. Heck, or even the enjoyability of Z or even the likability of characters like Barts or Zidane. She's just kind of this aloof girl who's like, I don't know what to do and I don't know if I have any emotions. And it's not good, and Terra is not fleshed out in a way that I kind of make her feel endearing. She feels very, very weak. And no, I'm not, I don't want Terra to be a Mary Sue, but I want her to at least have some levels of humanity. Some levels of, well, no, not levels of humanity. I want some, a sense of urgency with Terra. You know, I don't, you know, give her all the layers you want, ask some deep questions about her, but I'm not gonna like her just because they have, because the character in question is thematically engaging. She's kind of bland. I prefer the term treasure hunting. <laughs> yeah. That's a recurring gag with Locke. He's a thief that wants to be called a treasure hunter. I actually like Locke. Locke is one of the three or so best characters in the entire game as far as writing is concerned. As far as depth and nuance goes, Locke, Solus, and Siam, they're great characters. It's just a shame that Siam sucks in battle. Locke sucks in battle too, in a, at least in a low level game. The only thing you would use Locke for is stealing. And we're going to be greatly handicapped in our attempts at per a perfect game because, well, Locke can't steal anything. So what are we going to do? Oh, yeah, there's a whole bunch of them, and it's just Locke versus... Six Megalodons, six Silver Lo eight Silver Lobos, and the Guard Leader. But don't worry, Mog and the entire posse of Moogles are gonna come to our aid. Alright, look, yeah, Sierra, the Moogle. You'll fight using three of press select to switch between them. If the if the if any of them reach Terra, the bell is lost. However, if your hit points are at zero, it's game over. So this is how I like to move my characters up, down a bit. I want to move the bulkiest Moogle team right there because they will fight four of these guys. 
but back row characters use long range weapons, which is why I shipped in the down there. And here is the least durable team. I actually forgot to move a character in the back row. But I remember to do that with Locke's team. Now I have to be really careful. Now here is our first spell. These battles, they are all missable formations. We technically only need to fight one of these guys, but from doing the practice run, fighting all six of them means we can spare having to pick up some treasure chests and restock on Gil. Instead, we could just fight these guys and get all the money we'll need to make purchases to buy the appropriate weapons and armor in so when we get to South Figaro. So I'm, you know, fighting these guys six times, they're not going to do anything in terms of battle formation. And I actually have my notes here. Alright. Silver Lobo and Megalodoth formations, they are, they are, through all intents and purposes, group three Formation 1. Alright. The two Silver Lobos that we got is Group 1, Formation 1. The two guards are Group 1, Formation 2. Had we gone the Rare Rat, the three Rare Rats, that would have been Group 2, Formation 6. And had we got in Bandit Spritzer, it would have been Group or formation four. And looky here. A new dance? Huh. Didn't know that any of these characters could learn abilities. What's going on with Ma? But so who learned the new dance, I wonder? And here's the more vulnerable team's turn. And and here's Monk's team yet again. Yeah, Monk's. Okay, Monk. Monk is kind of an interesting character. Because, unlike the other Moogles here, and Q can. He, Monk can learn new abilities after every battle. Additionally, you can access his equipment. You can't do that with the other Moogles. And for the record, you can't access Biggs or Wedge's equipment either. I could fight the Garlier now, but, you know, we got two more enemies to fight. Let's switch to Mog's team. Right here. Anyways. Well. So, yeah. And... Anyways, the band Spritzer formation would have been Group 4, Formation 2. Neither of those formations would have gotten in the way. The Summer Lobo and Two Guards is Group 6, Formation 1, and the... Uh, and the Two Megalodoths and Two Guards were Group 11, Formation 4. We have no choice but to encounter the Two Guards, the Pinsir Attack, and the Megalodoth Formation. But we could have skipped the two silver logos if we wanted to, but it's mystical. Same for Nicolodot silver logo. Yeah, I'm getting some pretty good RNG here. I keep getting item drops at the wazoo here. And this is such a beautiful run, too. Things could have easily gone wrong if the Megalodoth started spamming Snowstorm. But instead, they just used it once and that was it. I usually see it land at least three or four times and really wreck my Moogle teams. Alright. And that's it, and that's everything. Man, I love getting these drop. These drop rates are next to nothing. I remove Mog's equipment. You see, you can't remove anyone else's equipment. Just Mog's. Alright, we're done with these other two Moogles. Now it's Locke's turn.
Just have to make sure I didn't forget anything. Here. Now it's time to begin the battle. This is actually kind of scary. He started with using net on lock. The scary part about using that is that basically means Guard Leader will likely ink all of his attacks on lock. Most of his attacks on lock. And if Locke dies, it basically means I can't steal what I want to get from Guard Leader. During a practice run, it took me forever to steal the freaking Mithril Ring, the uh, Mithril Knife from Guard Leader, which is a common steal, by the way. It took like seven tries, and all but one Moogle was dead. By but Locke and one Moogle was dead by the time I finally stole it, and I barely survived. Well, okay, if, if all, your entire party gets wiped out during this sequence, they will just start, they will simply respawn right next to Terra, with their whole party revived at 1 HP. It's one of, like, three scenarios, three or four scenarios, where that could happen. Normally, if your party wipes out, it's game over. But this is an exception. The only... So I decide... I kill Locke here so he doesn't gain any experience. But don't worry, he'll be revived right away. See? So this is actually a really good guard leader. Even... In spite of Locke having been stopped. All right. Thanks, Moogles. We're in your death. Orig Believe it or not, in the original SNES version, Locke had a specific disdain for the fact that he has to save Terra. But that one's mostly been reduced to just being kind of dismissive. This sucks. This switch Shada. But yeah, I really like Locke as a character. But I, Terra does lack the kind of nuance or complexity of characters like Clad or Cecil do. You know, if you want a great female, if you want a f great female protagonist in Final Fantasy, Yuna and, to a lesser extent, Lightning are as good as they get as far as female protagonists are concerned. Most of them are kind of bland and... Okay, if you mention characters like Celis or Tifa or Aerith, Garnet, you know... They're not the main character of their respective game, but they are major characters. And here's a character-specific cutscene that's missable. Yep, we can't return- we can't head- we cannot return to Narsha this time. Gotta make our way to Figaro. But first, let's go into that house for a bit. Despite all our advances, we don't really need an all, any of this. Yep, and here's a free HP recovery. And... Do not open that treasure chest that contains that single so Remember that single silver lobe? And here's a hidden ether. Remember the single silver lobos we passed up at, at the very beginning of the, uh, of, of the game? Well, that chest contains a, du a duplicate single lobos. It is not immiscible in counter. So I will really just loot the other two rooms of their contents, a sleeping bag, and a potion, as well as the ether hidden in the pot. Interestingly, bitch, interesting bit of trivia. I did not show this off, I don't think, but you start with no items in your inventory. But after the sequence of the frozen Esper, Terra wakes up in the old guy's bed with two sleeping bags. If you just want to wonder, did Biggs and Witch turn into sleeping bags? Because that's not the right Esper to, that would do such a thing. But can we make it a Narsh? Find out next time on Final Fantasy VI!